number 11, the book of Judges, chapter number 11. God bless you. Amen. I feel that we have a, a word from the Lord on today. Amen. I was sitting on the edge of the bed, and the Lord began to talk to me about the spirit of rejection. Ain't nobody saying nothing. He began to talk about the spirit of rejection. And I said, Lord, what are you really trying to say to me? And he said, this is what I want you to minister from the subject, rebounding from rejection. You look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you don't know my story. But I'm rebounding from rejection. Mm, I feel the spirit of God already. Uh, the 11th chapter, verse number 1 through verse number 3. And the Bible says, Now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. And he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begot Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons. And his wife's sons grew up and made a thrust, or they thrust out Jephthah, and said unto, them, unto him, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. And then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob, and there were gathered vain or worthless men to Jephthah. And he went out with them. Drop down to verse number nine. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be my witness between us if we do not so according to thy word. Just look at your neighbor and tell him I'm rebounding from rejection. Amen. I want to minister for a few minutes today. I feel very strong about this particular sermon and subject because the word rebound means to bounce back. It means to recover from unpleasant things in life. Is there anybody in here besides me that have had to bounce back from some of the things that were unpleasant in your life. You had to recover from some things. Some things knocked you down. Some things took you by surprise. Some things stunned you for a season. Some things locked you up for a season, but you had to bounce back. Now the word rejection, it means to refuse to accept or to cast out or to get rid of because you feel like it's useless or it's not satisfactory. Many people count you off because they cannot identify your value. Many people cannot see what they have and when they cannot see what they have, they have a tendency to disrespect anything that they do not value. When we value things, we have a tendency to take care of it and to cherish it, but when we do not value things, we have a tendency to handle it any kind of way. So I need to tell somebody in here today who has been through something, who have been through some unpleasant things, who have been through some hurt, who have been through some disappointments, who have been through some divorce, huh? who have been through sickness, rape, molestation, teenage pregnancy, addiction, huh? relational breakup, job loss, marital problems, huh? that you will bounce back. Huh? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm in pain now, but I will bounce back. Huh? I'm going through something right now, but I will bounce back. I don't have a whole lot of friends now. They kick me to the curb, but I will bounce back. I'm depressed right now. I'm struggling right now, but I will bounce back. You have to make up your mind that regardless to who will not, uh, hear me good, who will not accept me, that I am accepted among the beloved. Uh, God loves 
loved me in spite of me. When he created me, he created, watch this here, something that he loved in his sight. So I cannot look at how people look at me and determine my worth. I feel like preaching. Yet we look here and the people perceive that he is useless because of where he comes from. Many of us come from places we have no control over. We have no authority over where our mothers raise us up at. We have no authority over who's going to be our mother and who's going to be our father. We cannot make that choice. God makes that choice for us. Many times we come from homes and we come from situations and circumstances that are not fruitful or pleasant, but we don't have to be who we came from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have a right to make a decision that I will be different. Look at somebody and say, I will be different. I got to teach you for a few minutes. Don't pick me up yet, yet, yes. I feel, I feel that I need to make this point come home because many times, many of us, we think we are who we've been through. We become the very person mm -hmm. in mentality and in action. We become that person because of what we went through. I am not what I have went through. I am not what I'm experiencing. I am not what I'm up against. I don't care what I used to be. What I used to be is not who I am. It's just a choice I made. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying in this church today. But you ought to tell somebody I made some mistakes. But I'm a mighty woman of God. I'm a mighty man of God. I'm a mighty teenager of God. I made some poor decisions. I made some bad choices. And it caused me something. I learned something from my experiences. I found out something that every decision I make is a consequence I must face. But I come to tell you, you can get up off of my back because I'm not going to lay down in my mistake. I'm not going to lay down in this place of pity. I don't care what happened to me as a child. When I was a child, I think as a child. But now I become a grown man. I must put away my child this year. We got too many folk holding on to what happened to them when they were a child and they cannot move forth in anything that God has for them because they got too much hatred in them because of what happened to them when they were a child. They have never matured in their mind so they cannot step out of the place that they're stuck in. But I come to preach the devil out of this place today. I need you to realize it's time for you to pray for. Yes, they mistreated you. Yes, they might have not liked you or liked the other child more than you. But you got to make up your Or I can embrace my tomorrow and I made up my mind. I, I'm going to go if I got to go by myself. I, I'm going to live if I got to live by myself. I, I'm going to prosper if nobody else don't prosper for me. You need to prosper from your pain. Prosper from your past. Prosper from your problems. Tell somebody what I went through and you'll push me into the place I'm trying to get to. God got something bigger for you. Something better for you. Something more awesome than you've ever experienced. And God said the reason I allowed you to go through what you went through is because I'm trying to push you in the place that I promised you. Look at somebody say, this pain is moving me. That's why some of you feel like you want to run. You don't want to run. You just want to get out of the place you're in. But God said that this situation, I put it there to move. All right. All right. And God, hold on a minute. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, this thing is moving me. Yes. See, glory, glory. it's not supposed to move you into a negative position. It's supposed to move you into a positive position. If you're going through something bad, why will you allow something bad to produce something bad in you? You've got to learn how to take the bad and flip it. Look at somebody say, I'm getting ready to flip this thing. Oh, this thing not going to destroy me. It's not going to get the best of me. It's not going to take advantage of me. It's not going to imprison me. It's not going to lock me up. I've been here too long. You might not want me here, but that's all right. Because God got something. He got something he 
got something, something better. Better. Somebody, can I talk about Jephthah? Jephthah, did this?